So every day I'm actually discovering more and more uses uh, to GPT-3's uh, codex, which is a very, very interesting um, natural language processing model, AI transformer model, that I cannot get bored of. So from a cybersecurity perspective or standpoint, so let me minimize this uh, window. So uh, there are, you can actually look into my previous videos and see how um, Codex was able to actually create a game from scratch. So this AI model is able to create stuff from scratch and the game was not like 15 or 20 lines of code. It was 140 lines of code. The first, uh, the first um, example of a working game in Python uh, was 300 lines of code. So what I'm actually surprised of is that uh, the code, the codex, codex built everything from scratch, wrote everything from scratch in the playground here at OpenAI, and uh, it kept context. So it's it's not easy to stay in context when you're actually prompting or when you're actually using a natural language processing transformer model. So in this case, the codex, the AI model was able to remain in context for 300 lines and the actual game was actually working. I was surprised. Now, here's another uh, use case that uh, codex is good for and I'm actually exploring because I also, um, I, I work in cybersecurity. So if you look into the examples, you have the code for uh, the um, prompts that have been uh, created by folks at OpenAI with respect to um, Codex. And one of them is this explain code. So I started with this one. You can simply just open this in Playground for those who have access to Codex and GPT-3. And in this case, uh, they actually provide a class and uh, then it prompts the model to explain what the class is doing. And if we run this, if we submit this, it actually explains what this class is doing. So the constructor creates a directory for the log file. If it doesn't exist, the log method writes a JSON event. Where is that? here and then the state method returns a dictionary with the set of completed tasks so straight to the point I mean no fluff and they've set the temperature to zero and the top P to one these are the parameters for the transformer model now what I did here is to actually give it a code and then without even saying that this is a comment I just asked from a security and vulnerability perspective what is wrong with the code above and then I hit submit so in this case uh, I've taken the example from Snoopy security vulnerable code snippets path traversal Java and the model said uh, the code above is not safe the user can input the path to a file in the safe their directory which will then be deleted so i'm not the most well-versed person in java but if path starts with safe there file f new file path so this actually creates a new file into the path and then delete the file which will then be deleted this is a bad idea because it is possible for the user to input the path to a file in home or another user's uh, home directory which could be a sensitive file okay and in my case I've set I've played with different temperatures so I've set this, the temperature to point uh, 35 the lower the temperature the model becomes more deterministic the higher the temperature the model becomes less deterministic and as explained here uh, less repetitive so as the temperature approaches to zero, the model will, will become deterministic. So lower temperature, more deterministic and repetitive model, higher temperature, less deterministic and less repetitive model. Now let's take another one. So let's look into vulnerable code snippets and let's actually see, let's go back. Let's go back even more. 
let's which one should I take insecure file uploads example one PHP okay let's take this one let's copy paste in here so before my prompt let's delete this and now let's see what it's doing so I've noticed that stop sequence enter sequence and press tab in this case I should probably do triple co quotes here same as in the example uh, from here let's see so code explain code and in this case we can see the triple quotes you have the stop sequence triple quotes here's what's uh, here's what the above class is doing let's actually try that see what we get from a security and vulnerability perspective what is wrong with the code above uh, temperature 0.35 response length 50 150 tokens submit so the code above is vulnerable to a file upload vulnerability so it actually knows insecure file uploads the code above is, is and the model becomes repetitive and then it actually starts generating let's actually do 100 response length and let's also do 0.5 temperature and make the model less uh, less deterministic and less repetitive delete this submit interesting and now th it actually takes it as a multiple choice question which is not what we want let's let's actually play with it see what it's what it keeps on submitting the answer what if we redo submit submit and it keeps on playing the game so this is what um, this is sort of like a failed attempt let's try again keeps on asking questions now let me actually decrease the temperature to 0 0.1 0 0.1 and then run this again still it takes this as a multiple choice question let's return to point 35 and then delete this stop sequence delete that as well maybe uh, I didn't do it uh, correctly so again let me actually post it as a comment what is wrong with the PHP I could say PHP code above submit obviously this is not what we're looking for this is just some random nonsense let's raise the temperature to 0.5 and then repeat this okay getting back to my what is wrong so from a security and vulnerability perspective what is wrong with the code above 
this was the first one with the uh, path reversal if I submit this the code above does not verify that the path is valid so maybe as far as I know um, the codex was actually trained on 90% Python and then some JavaScript Java uh, and some others but the majority of uh, its um, is training has been done if I am correct uh, on Python so this simple snippet of code the model was able to determine that this uh, is a path reversal now it wasn't able to tell us I mean it was for example uh, it was in the like in the first uh, submission it was able to tell us that this is a file upload vulnerability but if let's actually take another example let's um, let's look at something more something harder buffer overflow let's look at this one copy this see if it understands it and we're just gonna paste it over here so from a security and vulnerability perspective what is wrong with the code above the file grant access contains the function that we want to call from our main function However, we are not allowed to call it as it is not declared in the same file. And then it keeps on saying the file, then the function, where is the function? The file grant access. The function, then it says the function takes a string and returns a boolean. However, in our case, the string is generated by the user and it is not guaranteed that the user will input only characters that are allowed in a string so good explanation let's uh, let it keep on completing in this case the function grant access is called from within the main function and thus it is vulnerable to an overflow attack what can we do in order to prevent this wow so then it actually goes on and uh, goes off track but I don't know what to say so I'm not sure if those of you who are watching can understand the true implications of this this type of technology is I mean it's just a simple it's just a model that has been trained on millions of pieces or billions of pieces of data of code from github so it actually knows a lot the purpose of the this ai model is to actually predict predict the very next word that's actually or the very next token that's actually what uh, natural language processing transformer models do best but if we like focus on a higher or more abstract abstract level this is kind of mind-boggling so it will definitely help cybersecurity professionals which is why I kept saying for more than a year I kept posting on Twitter for people to to actually look into machine learning to start learning machine learning to not focus not be myopic and focus on a single aspect such as penetration testing or bug bounty hunting because if you lose track of what's going on if you're too focused on one thing chances are that you're very likely to be replaced by some sort of technology in the future so how can you stay on track how can you future proof your career so one of the ways because it seems it it not only seems it is a fact that machine learning and ai models are part of what we're doing and it they keep on getting more integrated into daily aspects of our lives not only 
uh, professionally but also personally so to actually stay on top of this the best thing to do is to learn machine learning how these models work how uh, they can malfunction how to debug them so for example if if you want to get access to openai go to beta openai.com and and actually join the waiting list and then when you get access to gpt3 and davinci codex start playing in the playground here and if you don't understand code for example let's actually do something else let's actually take uh let's actually say here's what the code above does and then say one obviously not very helpful let's rerun that we get the same uh, <laughs> we get the same um, the code above if it is vulnerable to buffer overflow now let's actually say something else explanation of the code above and if this doesn't work Let's actually let it like that. The program asks the user to enter a username and stores it in the uh, char array username. So char username int allow gets username, user input. This is user input. The program then checks if the username is valid and if it is valid, it grants access. The program then executes a privileged action. In the end, the program returns zero. Now I could go on and on. So, and it, then it goes and say, what's wrong with this code? I could go on and on and say, uh, in the end, the program returns zero. Uh, what does return zero mean? What if I ask that? What does return zero mean? The return value of a program tells the operating system what to do next. In this case, the program returns zero and the operating system will exit the program and return zero to the shell, which in turn will exit the shell and return zero to the user. The reason why we return zero is that the program has finished its task and we don't want the operating system to do anything with the program anymore. Okay, I rest my case. I have nothing to say and I'm actually going to finish this video over here.